Hey there, my name's Melanie Diane Howe and I'm a certified Canva creative. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can customize your very own video end screen just using Canva. I'm also gonna show you why this is important and how you actually change that end screen in your YouTube studio. Let's get going. So inside your YouTube studio, you go to content and you select any of your videos, you're gonna notice that you have some options to edit that video after it's either gone live or been published. And if you go out to the right, one of those areas is the end screen. So if we select, click on that, you're gonna notice there are some automatic templates inside of YouTube. These are actually the ones I always recommend. You're gonna notice some squares and some circles, and that's basically your cards for your videos and the circle is for your subscription call to action. So take note of these because you're gonna to wanna to design your end screen so that it accommodates this aspect. Now here we are inside of Canva. And one of the easiest ways for you to get started with your YouTube end cards is actually just to start with one of our great templates. You can do this a couple of ways. You can actually just go to create a video. You're gonna notice that your pixels that it gives you are 1920 by 1080. Now if you're doing 4K videos, you're gonna wanna design your end screens to match that same size, which is actually 3840 by 2160 but you can always resize the template after you choose it. Let's go up here and actually just search YouTube outro. And right here, you're gonna notice we've got some templates already loaded for you. So now here we are and you can see all of these cool options for those end screens. And you'll notice a lot of these actually look a lot like a YouTube end screen already. We already have the boxes and the shapes in there. So those make it really, really easy. So I always suggest start with a design that looks like it's gonna fit your style. If you don't really have a style just yet, pick one that you just really enjoy. If you hover over it, you're gonna get a little bit of a preview. Now some of these are gonna be animated and some of these are just gonna be static images and either is totally fine. Now I've gone ahead and selected a template that I think is gonna be a great starting point for us to get a beautiful end screen for our videos. Now, any of these templates can be customized, the colors, the fonts, the text even, you can move elements around and you can change the backgrounds, of course. You can also add your own elements like images and other animations to these graphics. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna change the color. I like the red, but I'm gonna go with a purple color. So I'm gonna select purple and I'm gonna use our color picker to just kind of create a custom color color. But if you know your hex value of your own brand colors, all you have to do is type it in right here. Now, once I've got one element selected in that color, if I want to make the other elements that color, it's already added to my document color palette. So we're going to go ahead and change these elements as well. Uh, I'm going to change these squares, make them purple as well. Now, this is a logo that we have down here, but it's really not my logo. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just delete that element as well as the animation aspects too. Now I've got my own logo uploaded in here. I'm gonna add it to this design and I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit. Again, we're just trying to kind of give us a nice custom look so it's nice and branded to everything that we've got going on. Now, thank you for watching. I think it's great. I'm gonna actually leave it as is. But I'm kind of thinking that I need a little bit more of a personal touch. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete this element, but I've been a little bit inspired by the circles. I like that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna add an image of myself to this design. So I'm gonna be adding a circular frame with a border and then adding my image to it. And to do that, you're gonna go to your elements and then your frames, scroll down, pick the frame you like. As I said, I'm gonna go with this circular one with a border around it. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna move it up into this corner here, make it justify a little bit with the, the text here. I like that look nice and clean. Now I'm gonna go over to my uploads and I'm actually gonna drag an image of myself into that border. And as you see, when you drag it over, it's gonna suck it right into that frame. Then I'm gonna double click so that I can actually get it aligned right into the middle so that it looks nice and fitting. Ah, I like that look a lot. Now let's look at maybe changing the background of this design. It's okay as it is, but I think I wanna go with a little bit of a different look. So I'm gonna simply select that background and I'm gonna go with a light gray. Looking pretty good, I like it, but now I'm kinda thinking, 
Maybe I should actually go over here and look at my background elements and consider a custom background. As you can see, we can get really fun and exciting. We can add fire, we can add all kinds of stuff. Canva's got a lot of really great backgrounds for you to choose from for your designs. So we're gonna go with this uh, nice light textured gray here. It's nice, I like that it adds a little bit more interest to the design than just the solid background. So now we have a nice custom background, but now I think I'm gonna go ahead and make a change to my text. I think I'm gonna go ahead and make that text black so that it pops a little bit better. Now I'm okay with my logo being very faint. It's kind of like a little bit of a watermark. I think it looks good the way it is. I don't need to make any adjustments there. Hey, come here. Now before I show you this next thing, I wanna take a minute to let you know, you're gonna to wanna to watch till the end of the video to know why I'm about to do what I'm about to show you. Also, this is a nice little moment to say, have you subscribed to our channel yet? If not, go ahead and subscribe. That way you don't miss any of the other tutorials. Okay, next. All right, there are a few other elements that I want you to consider removing or adjusting. The first one is that this file actually has audio. So we're actually gonna remove this audio because of the way that I wanna use it, and you may wanna consider the same thing. Although Canva does have an audio library, if you want to add songs or music to your end screens, you certainly can. You can also make those adjustments in whatever post-production software that you're using to edit your videos. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just click it and hover over these three buttons, and I'm gonna remove that audio file that came with this particular template. Now here's the next place where it gets a little strategic. How are you going to be using the end screen? You notice here that we have some animations and of course we have our cards. These end screens can be used to be added at the end of a pre-recorded video, but they can also be used in your live streaming software to end your live video. If you're gonna be using it that way, I would recommend you remove these boxes as well as the animations because while you're live, your audience might be like, what are those crazy arrows pointing to? You can't actually add your end cards or your end screen until your live video has gone through processing. And so it might be a little bit confusing for your live audience. Plus, when you remove these elements, it does give you some flexibility to rearrange things and maybe make some changes to those call to action cards later. Now, the other thing I want you to consider is actually removing these boxes no matter what. You're gonna see this after I show you how this looks in the YouTube editor later, but just trust me on this, these are really here for placeholder so that you can be designing your end screen knowing that these are where those place cards are gonna go. So we're gonna go ahead and delete them. It's gonna give us some safety, and as I mentioned earlier, some flexibility. Now I'm gonna leave the animations in there for now because I intend to use this as the end screen on a pre-recorded video. So we're almost ready to export this file, but you'll notice here that it's already defaulted to six seconds. Now your end screen in YouTube can be five to 20 seconds long. But as I mentioned here, I have two areas where I'm gonna be giving a call to action. I wanna make sure I give my audience plenty of time to see what's there, make a decision to click through to the next place that I want them to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this the full 20 seconds that YouTube actually gives us. Whoops, let me do that again and then hit a 20, and we're now 20 seconds long. Automatically adjusted our video, we're ready to go. I always recommend you preview your file before you actually export it to just make sure it's gonna look the way you want. We do have some text animations in here that we've selected as well, so let's see how it all looks. Ooh, it's looking good, I like it. Now we're not gonna preview this whole thing for the full time for the purpose of this tutorial. I'm ready to show you what this is gonna look like in YouTube. So we are going to download our file, download it as an MP4 of course, and we're gonna be ready to upload it into our post-production software, but I'm gonna skip that part. Now we're gonna take a look at what this looks like over in YouTube. Okay, now we're over here in my YouTube studio. I've just uploaded a video where we have this end screen. So once it's done uploading, you're actually gonna wanna go to next. It's gonna take you to the second step, which is video elements. Now you're gonna have some options here, one of which is end screen. So simply go out to the right, click add, and then it's gonna take you to the end screen editor. So here you can actually choose some pre-designed templates where these elements go. The gray elements are those end screen elements. I'm actually gonna select this particular one here because it just has those two boxes, which is what we designed our end screen around. You're gonna notice that they're up in the upper left-hand corner and the upper right-hand corner, but you can actually click and drag them and put them wherever you want. So you recall the design that we designed before, these needed to go out to the right. So that's what I've done here, I've made that 
adjustment. Now, the other thing is that you can also adjust where these show up, but that's why I mentioned the 20 seconds. It automatically is gonna default you to 20 seconds. If your end screen is shorter than that, you are gonna need to adjust where those elements show up because you don't want them to show up too soon. And all we have to do here is we can preview where they're gonna show up and we'll see that end screen. And there it is. It animated in, our little animations are pointing to everything and it's awesome. Now, the other thing you're gonna have to do is customize what these cards say. So when you click on them, you are gonna be able to change them. So this one's a playlist card. So we're actually gonna select a particular playlist. And then this one, it defaults to best for viewer, uh, but if you want it to be your most recent upload or even a very specific video that you wanna make sure they see at the end, you can select that as well and make that the option for that card. And then all you have to do is save your changes and you're ready to go. Now let's take a look and see what this is gonna look like as its final result on the big screen with those cards placed. And there you have it, our in-screen designed in Canva with those custom place cards for the next options for your audience to take a look at the rest of your channel. Pretty cool, right? Now, I hope you didn't forget I told you to delete those boxes, right? Now, the reason I told you to delete those boxes is because in that editor, now you can actually edit your end screens even after you've originally published it. In the editor, you can also make these larger and they are gonna get bigger. You also may decide you only want one later and you might wanna put it in the middle and you might wanna make it a little bit larger. This flexibility is important because you never know what you're gonna to wanna to do down the road. If you had those boxes in your design, then you would be stuck with those boxes in your video and you would always have to have those two place cards over them. So I always say design with the card or the boxes so that you can make sure the layout's gonna look good, but go ahead and remove them before you actually publish your video for your end screen. Well, there you have it. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful and inspiring, and now you're ready to go create your very own custom end screens so that you can get more subscribers and more views on your videos. Speaking of subscribers, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of our other tutorials and our feature updates. Once again, I'm Melanie Diane Howe. Thanks again for watching.